Alright everyone, welcome back to Dark Souls Remastered. Time for us to go to the Undead Asylum. Or should I say, return to the Undead Asylum. Now, where is... there's my pyromancy flame. Ah, and these guys are here now. We'll go ahead and talk to them. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. Okay. That's all that guy ever says. Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Times are grim. The least you can do is look sharp. Don't you dare meet my lady like that. You might scare her off for good. I'm gonna do it anyway. You are undead as well. And we've no time to fraternize. I have my mission and you no doubt have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. All right. I think it's after we beat one more boss. They're going to be gone to the catacombs. Okay. So we're going to go up this way. And then we're going to roll off over here. Oh, well, just walk off, I guess. Over here we will roll, because just walking won't get us far enough. There we go. Sometimes you can get hung up about halfway up here. If you just roll forward, you'll go up and be past it. We already grabbed the key from the corpse right there that we don't really know why it's there, but whatever. And we're going to come up around this way and sit in the nest. It takes, I think, 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, something like that. But just wait here until something happens. Ah, uh, burritos. Oh, my. Is a good burrito. There we go. Hello again, crow. Or raven. I'm not the best at birds. I assume it's a crow. Yeah, go curl up like an egg and then the crow will come get you. Side on. Quit eating my foot. I'm not playing with you right now, boyo. So we're back here. And as you can already see down there, there's some different enemies. Now we're here for a number of items. Let's take on these guys. We got staggered. Oh, wow, that hit hard. Why did that hit me so hard? Good thing I could fully restore my health. Now, I will say my health is a little bit below where I normally have it. Um, we're going to leave an item over here with Snuggly. You, you, give me warm, give me soft. So what we're going to drop, uh, we're going to drop the sack item. So we drop, yes. Oh, that was almost bad. <laughs> okay, so we have that there. And when we come back after a while, it'll be a different item. If I remember correctly, dropping that gives us a sunlight maggot, though I won't swear to that. So we'll head back in. Make sure you do not walk across the middle area of the floor yet. We're going to go around. First thing we're going to do is grab a bonfire just in case we die, because there are some strong things here, not to mention the stray demon we'll be fighting. Stray Demon's gonna give us some good souls. Okay. Now, if you notice your surroundings, you probably actually already saw the Stray Demon when you first entered, or first started up the game, because you can see him in your initial place. Go ahead and kindle. Okay, we're gonna head back down to our cell, because there's an item there that wasn't there before. There we go, that's how I... Okay, so heading off this way. Eh. My bad. There we go. There's a new enemy here as well. There's a Black Knight. Luckily, he's just a basic Black Knight, and you saw how well I trashed those. 
especially with their own sword. Come on. You call yourself a knight. All right, red tight knight chunk. Now see, uh, there is the stray demon. Now he's gonna be waiting for us to crash down through the ceiling there. So, as I said, we're gonna try to iron flesh before doing it. Hopefully, it works in our favor. Okay, we grab the peculiar doll. Now the reason we want the peculiar doll is we can use that to go to an optional place called the Painted World of Ariamis. A fan favorite, and personal favorite of mine as well. It's a really pretty area, a lot of unique enemies, and a very unique boss that can give you two unique weapons. Okay, I'm gonna head up. Now we're gonna take the route that you normally take through the place. So we're gonna go through this big door, and then we'll go through the side door where that second bonfire is. That's not what I wanted at all. Oops, I forgot I didn't have a bow equipped. Well, at least I can watch my timer and see how long this actually lasts. Started at roughly 37 seconds. and cut out at about 14 so I'm gonna say it's a rough 20 we'll jump down when it's been about 20 seconds uh, we'll go ahead and kindle this bonfire as well doesn't really matter which bonfire we come from but all right We did need to rest and restore our iron flesh use, though. So we have a second big boy over there. We'll take him out just like the first. My, uh, I'm using the bad controller. I'm, oh, right in the balls. Bet you really felt that one. You sure you still have the will to fight me? Looks like you do. Let me fix that. <laughs> All right. Take him down just like the last one. <sighs> Continuing on this way, you recall Oscar, the man who let us out and gave us our Estus flask. Well, he's hollowed now, and we're gonna have to take him out. I'm sorry, Oscar. Oh, he backed away. Take Oscar out and grab the Crest Shield from him. The Crest Shield is one of the absolute best shields in the game. It does lose fire and lightning and a little bit of stability compared to our normal uh, shield, but it has 80 magic and 30 durability. Uh, what's our current stability? 58. So it loses t three stability, which isn't anything to really cry about. Are we still? We can go higher. Do we have any better armor? Really? Surely we have something better. Wow. I didn't think I was wearing the best armor I could and still, wow. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think, yeah, that's reset, so go ahead and trigger that again. Head up this way, take him out. Oh, we missed. Interesting, okay. So we're gonna head up this way. There's still gonna be the three over here. Except now we're even more overpowered for them than we are when we start. Okay. 
come at me. That guy, of course, is new. For the most part, it's the same enemies. I think they're just a little bit tougher than they were the first time we came in. I don't know exactly where they'd be ranked as far as toughness. I know you at least have to go to the Undead Parish in order to get to them so you can fix the elevator. Okay, so over here we have the Rusted Iron Ring, which allows us to not be slowed down by walking through deep waters and such. Okay, because I'm curious, we're gonna Iron Flesh and then drop off this big ledge up here. We're gonna make sure not to hit the center. I'm curious exactly what the fall damage reduction is. Doesn't look like it really reduces fall damage. So we would need to use the sorcery slow fall, or controlled fall, whatever it is, which we don't have. Come on. Okay, so we're not using iron flesh, which means we're gonna go back and assign that pyromancy, or this is a pyromancy, assign one of our damaging fire. I think I have fire orb. Probably gonna use fire orb. Combustion's a good one, it has a lot of uses, but we don't really uh, wanna be quite that close. Fire is what I have, it has eight uses. Okay. Can we level? We can't. All right. <clears throat> Let's go get it done. This is gonna suck. Now the initial uh, little bit of this battle is probably the hardest bit to overcome. Just because you're initially damaged and have to recover before you can even begin to truly fight him. Okay, let's go down. It's right about uh, like two squares in front of me, I think is where the floor breaks. Okay, we need to get around behind him where his magic can't hit us. There's that magic wave. It has a massive area, so be careful. Looks like we barely have the stamina to take his attack, so it'd be better to try to dodge. Magic attack drains our bar, but it's better to block that. You can't really dodge it. Come on. Okay, we're not using that. We don't have a powered up pyromancy flame, so that's not really gonna do much for us here. All right, we wanna get him stuck in that animation right there. <clears throat> Good. That goes out to roughly the tip of his tail, so be careful. Because it can hit you behind him, it just has a very short range behind him. If we can keep him in this animation, he's gonna be real easy to kill. We got him in a loop. I will agree though, the Stray Demon is much harder to fight than the regular Asylum Demon just because, first of all, his health is very, very buffed, his damage is scaled and high, in addition to his magic attack that will really catch you off guard if you're expecting just a bigger reskin of the first boss. Okay, go around behind him. We could take advantage of that to smack him, but we want to get around behind where his magic won't be as much of a threat. We're doing good damage to him. It's not the best, but it's been, honestly, a little better than I hoped for. Oh, okay. Let's keep getting him. I think two more hits ought to finish him off. Let's go ahead and get him. Got him. Okay. Great work. That is not the thing I wanted. Prayer. All right. And he dropped a Titanite slab. I believe that's a guarantee, but I won't swear to that. As far as base Titanite, 
Titanite slab is the highest form. Any slab is the highest form of Titanite you can get there. All right, so we head up here and then drop into here and there's our cell. And that's all there is to do at the Undead Asylum. As you can see, we also got a pretty good amount, I think 20,000 souls from him. We'll probably get about three levels out of that, I'm guessing. Due to the increasing tax. If we're lucky, four, but I'm betting three, unless we have any items. No. All right. Yep, three, that's what I thought. Oh, wow, I didn't realize we were up to 8,000 each. <laughs> okay. Strength and dexterity are good. So, one, one, and one. Keep buffing our damage, our health, and our stamina. Those are our big stats right now. We want to make sure they stay big. The only reason I bother getting dexterity as high as I do is so that I can use the Dragon Slayer Great Bow. I love it so much. All right, let me check my phone real quick. Grab a bite of my burrito that my loving wife made for me. Oh yeah, that was a good burrito. Okay, so now we'll head back and we just killed the gaping dragon, if memory serves. Headshot, nice. Oh, he dropped something. Probably just a broken blade. Yep. All right. So we'll head back down. We're going to have to run through the depths, unfortunately, most of the way. Because, well, there's a shortcut we can take that isn't horrible. Alright. Now, that shouldn't be changed yet. Let's go. I'm gonna skip the cutscene here this time because it's the same thing. Bird comes up, flies, drops us off. And we are on a time limit, of course, as I can only record a certain amount. Okay. Jump off here. And here we go. What's up, bud? Oh, hello there. I'm pleased to see you safe, as always. If you provide the materials, I can teach you pyromancy. Yeah, uh, we're gonna upgrade this as high as we can right now. Oh, I already used most of my souls. My bad. Well, a Goodbye. plus two pyromancy flame is better than a zero. Now, the plus two fireball is gonna do substantial damage to anything over here. It'll probably do good damage to anything down in Light Town as well, which is where we're going next. So 170. Let's compare that damage, shall we? 269. So a basic hit on these is doing 99 more damage with our sword than it is with fire, which is one of the absolute most broken ways to start the game. Early game, Pyromancy, I believe, could be called the strongest. Sorcery probably rivals it, just because sorcery has a longer range, but Pyromancy, for terms of sheer damage output early game, is broken as hell. Pyromancy is also a very easy build to go with, because due to the fact that your flame levels separately from you, you can excuse me, pour your stats into whatever you want. So honestly, as you can see here, it's easy to build a tanky build with a Pyromancer. Because you can do absolutely whatever and it works as long as your Pyromancy flame is kept up. I will say though, later game it definitely falls off one of the hardest. I think the magic builds are what fall off the hardest in late game if you pour everything into your magic. And the reason for this is that things just keep getting more and more resistance 
And Pyromancy, I believe, falls off the hardest because unlike the others, it has no stat it relies on or gets a bonus from. Therefore, you reach a cap. And once you reach that cap, it's just done. You have to rely on everything else once your spells wear out. And in New Game Plus, New Game Plus 2, all that, the further you go, it's just going to go further and further down. So, early game, first playthrough, Pyromancy is probably one of the better builds. If you're planning on going into New Game Plus and past, you probably want to go with a different build. That's why I am going to have my Pyromancy Flame in this one. I'm going to level it a bit and everything, but I'm probably not going to rely on it too much as we go on. Okay, we're going to head around this way. The main reason I want to do it is because I've never used Pyromancy against Ornstein and Small, and they are one of the most difficult fights in the game, and one of their the only thing they have a shared weakness to is Pyromancy. Okay, I'm gonna run up and get this bonfire just in case we die in Blight Town because I make mistakes. Blight Town's one of the biggest places I make mistakes in. Yee, yeah, fuck boy. Sure you want to follow me? Uh, goodbye. <laughs> All right. I think I'm also going to put my summon sign down at the entrance of Blight Town because I know that when I go bl through Blight Town, at least when I was less skilled, I would have loved some help. <laughs> so let's get down there. Here we go. Do do do. Do 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 do. All right. Welcome to Blight Town. Before I head down, I'm gonna check my phone. Okay, how much time we got left here? About 37 minutes. Plenty of time to at least get to the first bonfire. Alright. Now, Blight Town has two levels. It mainly consists on the upper level of a bunch of these dangerous catwalks, and at the lower level, a massive poison swamp. Okay. The first enemy is right there. On both ends of Blight Town, whether you come in this way or the Master Key way, there is three undead barbarians. They are very big, very tanky, hit hard, and they cause a new status. Toxic. Toxic is poison on steroids. They can be parried. Okay. If they do that roar, take the free hit. They can't do anything about it. Back off a little bit. Watch out for the lunge. Now normally I'd maneuver around and try to get the backstab or take them out with the archery. I'm trying to give you guys a better view of what they do. But yes, they build up toxic and toxic is no fun. To combat toxic, uh, the basic poison you need the purple moss clumps. Toxic on the other hand, you need blooming purple moss clumps. I only have three so I can aff only afford to be toxic three times. If I get toxic past that, I'm probably just going to run back to a bonfire. Because I cannot out Estus toxic. I'm not fond of parrying these guys just because the parry timing can be a little bit hard to predict. There we go. Come on. We're going to try to lure them without attracting the rest. Deeper in, the main enemy of this place is, I like to call them ghouls, but I think they're technically called feral undeads. Get that sweet backstab! Is a two hand enough to finish him? Okay. Yeah, they're tanky even for me with this sword right now, so... <clears throat> There's an additional enemy to worry about though, and it is the biggest threat of this place. And that is the Blow Dart Sniper. Ooh, 
One of them's shooting at me right now. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, he's over there by that torch. And you can probably see the white streaks that are his darts coming at me. Blow dart snipers cause toxic. And they, if you don't have any toxic, if you have, well, honestly, if you have medium to low toxic resist, they will instantly give you toxic if they make contact. And your shield can only block so much of it. So even approaching it with a shield raised is a little risky if you don't get to him fast. These guys take two hits. Okay, we'll tr see if we can lure another one. Okay, we're where he can't hit us. All right, let's go get him. Now, usually if you're melee, approaching them is your best bet. They usually die in one hit like that. Uh, they usually drop a combination of moss, purple moss clumps and blooming purple moss clumps, so that's good. Okay, let's take out this guy. Now these guys have one really dangerous attack to watch out for. On the most part, they're not overall that dangerous. But they do have a grab attack, and it's a very predictable grab though, so don't worry too much about it. They usually kind of crouch and wave both arms in front of you. It's very visible when they go to do it. So there's what, a spear? I've never got a spear from one of them before. All right, some firsts. I think there's another guy over here. No, looks like he's not here. Okay, we'll grab Soul of a Proud Knight. Head back this way. My uh, messed up controller is trying to throw me off the edge. Okay. Now, there's two ways to go here. Technically, uh, both are somewhat safe. If you want to take a bridge, it's better to take that bridge over there. I'm going to go ahead and take this one just to show you. Well, let me take care of this guy first. Alright. This is a shifting bridge. And the physics of it are a little weird, so just be careful if you take the bridge. We'll go back here in a minute. Well, first, we're going to go across this bridge now. Now, there's an alternate thing, you, or an item you can grab, and you can only grab this item if you take this route and jump. It's over there, as you can see, and we're going to have to jump from here to there. It's a little bit of a big jump, so you have to really time it well. There we go. That's, like, <laughs> that's actually the best I've ever done that jump, I'm not going to lie. All right, we get the Iato. Now the Iato is the first of the katanas available to us, and it's a very good weapon. Its damage isn't the best, starts at 88, but it has a B rating from dexterity and causes bleed. Um, I think, yes, I do have the stats to wield it, so I'll show you real quick, see. It has a decent range, hits like that. Its charge attack is that, or heavy, I mean. There's its two-handed lights, and then its two-hand heavy. Oh boy, hey, that was close. So it's a very good weapon. Um, if you want to keep with the bleed build but want to do more base damage than with the bandit knife, this is a good weapon for you. Although in terms of bleed, you'll fall off a bit just because it can't stack up hits as fast as the bandit knife. We're gonna roll off this way. And there is the first bonfire of Blight Town. There are two bonfires of Blight Town. Technically three if you count the one in the Great Hollow, but we're not counting the one in the Great Hollow, which is this big fucking tree next to us. Because that's technically its own place. Checking my phone. All right. We got here a lot faster than I expected us to, so let's do some exploring, shall we? There's a lot of items to grab in Blight Town, and many of them are useful. Oh my god, come on. Why? Okay, so around here, there's two enemies down at the bottom of this ladder. I'm gonna try to plunge. Got them both. Broken Street Sword. Now, over here, I'm a little nervous about this part just because I'm using the busted controller. Or, well, not busted, but... Okay. Here we have three blooming purple moss clumps. A very good grab. Now, this part's okay. It's the next part that's messing with me a little bit. 
and that is these three consecutive shifting bridges. Just pay close attention, make little adjustments, and you'll be okay. There we go. Now over here we have a new enemy, which is a Hellhound. It's very similar to the Undead Dog, except they have a Fire Breath attack that is not to be underestimated. It will torch the absolute hell out of you. Okay, so moving this way, right here you want to go ahead and break these. And be careful going around here, because sometimes the camera will suddenly jerk, and if you're moving fast enough and can't react fast enough, you'll just go down there and die. Go over here. Don't hug the wall too close, or you'll slip down and might end up actually falling off. Grab the humanity. Okay, let's go. And head up this way. We're going to head back across the bridges. Honestly, I could just homeward bone. If I wanted to avoid this, if you have enough homeward bones to spare, you might, you can do that. I don't really see any shame in it. If you want to protect yourself and not risk losing your stuff. Because, you know, if you die over there, you gotta go back over there and get it. Alright. Now let's continue. We're gonna backtrack a little bit, actually, since, as I said, there was a second path, a normal path to take, instead of just jumping off over there. So we're gonna go to that path now, and there are a few items I overlooked for you guys that we'll go back and get now, since we jumped to get the E-Auto. Now, this guy over here in the pot, you can actually ignore. He won't do anything if you don't break him out of the pot. Get this guy here. Now, watch your back here, as there is a chance someone will come up behind you from below who saw you. There's going to be four to be here. One there. The other three will come down the ladder. I hate that little dodge. I don't see anyone coming behind us yet. Come on down. Keep looking behind us just to be sure. Can I fireball him up there? I can. I didn't expect to hit him. Got him. Cool. Come on down. Come on. Come on. Get down here. Staggered me as he fell on me. Alright. Now, first we're going to come over here. Now normally you'd be going this way and you'd see that and drop down. Be careful. Don't drop down off of there to here because this little area here will give out below you and you fall to your death. Large soul of a nameless soldier. Why do I keep getting caught on stuff? Alright. Gonna head up this way. And now... Let's see... Yeah. Right over there is where we jump to get the auto. Also, I forgot to mention, don't worry about the Blodar snipers too much if you kill them, because they don't come back. Alright, we're gonna go around the backside here. Ah, damn you, controller. Alright, usually I try to go a bit further, but you can't go anywhere this way, as you can see. So we're going to head this way and grab the Shadow Set. The Shadow Set is a very, very good light set and has, I believe, one of the highest poison resistances in the game. At least at this stage. So we're going to head over here. Grab, I think, another Soul of Proud Knight. Yep, Soul of Proud Knight. Now, there's the bridge we'd be proceeding to, and the bonfire's right over there. So we're gonna go ahead and roll down here. I think one of the dogs just fell to their death. Okay. Take him out. He came from the bridge. Now, there was also two dogs on the bridge. They all ran that way. Uh, it looks like one fell. 
He'd be around here, so be careful. Now, this bridge, you want to get across fast. I don't know if you can see him up there, but you can probably see the bolts coming at me. There's another sniper. Take these guys out and try to get out of the way so you don't get shot. All right. Now, we can get up to him, and we will here in a bit. First, we're going to go over here. Get behind here just to be safe. Now, there's a ladder right next to us, and there's a big parasite thing right there. Don't worry about that yet. We'll take care of it in a very, very safe way. Oh, damn. A torch got in my way. We get almost one shot with a two-hand light. That's nice. There's another ladder there, and that's where we'll be going first. Be careful, though, because the way he came up, there'd be another one, and there's one that comes up this way. You want to be sure not to get hit on both sides. Yep, there he is. Backstab! Get out of here! Give me that item first. <laughs> All right. Head this way, and be careful, because there is another blow dart sniper down here. Right around the edge there. Go ahead and take him out. Okay. Okay. Heading over here. Take out this guy. Alright. And we get the item that I wanted, which is the Eagle Shield. In most cases, the Eagle Shield is the first great shield you're going to come across. It has 95 physical, so not the best, but it has 55 magic, 45 fire, 75 lightning, and 70 stability. It also requires 16 strength and is only 6 pounds. It is the lightest great shield in the game. Now, great shields are a bit different in that you can't parry with a great shield. Instead, you'll bash. Which, the bash is very good for staggering uh, human-sized enemies, of course. Bigger enemies, I didn't really get to do too much to in most cases. <sighs> okay, heading around this way now. Go over here. There's another item right there. As you can see, there's an item there, but we can't get to it yet while that thing's alive. We'll take care of it soon. Go ahead and grab this, but we're going to go this way first. There's an undead barbarian in that tunnel to the left, so be careful there. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you can trick him into basically swinging himself off into oblivion and dying. But we're going to go up here and take care of this Blodar Sniper. Okay. Now we're going to go around this way. I missed this a couple times uh, in replays because I had forgotten where it was. I knew there was a tunnel to go here, I just couldn't remember exactly where the entrance was. So we're going to go around this way and down this ladder. As you can see there, it puts us on this walkway, which goes right behind that parasite. This is very good as, if I recall correctly, it cannot damage you at all back here. It may be able to stagger you, but it can't actually damage you. One more of those ought to be all we need. Gonna look over there. I don't see the barbarian, so I'll assume he went back in. You can get the power within pyromancy. Heading on. I heard the big guy, but I don't see him. There he is. We're going to try to take out the little one first. So we aren't fighting both at once. Yes. Okay, good. Now that he's gone, we'll try to backstab. There we go. And take him out. Now this is the way to actually proceed with the level. Oh, we got his club. The club is an okay strength weapon. I, I wouldn't really call it good, but I also ne wouldn't necessarily call it bad. So through this fog wall, we will see that there's a path here and a ladder going down to more platforms. Well, we're actually going to be going coming out again where the bottom of the ladder is, because we're going for something else. 
Someone left a message right there on that ledge next to that item. That is where we're dropping to. It's going to take some damage. As you can see, it's a little bit of damage. Not too much, but it might hurt you if you have low vitality. Something just fell to its death. All right, we get a whip. The whip is actually a decent dexterity weapon. It's very interesting to use. Go down here. Take a little bit more fall damage. We're going to go ahead and heal just in case something gets a lucky shot on us. Now we are here. We're almost to the second level. So we have a new enemy, the Crag Spider. Crag Spiders have a couple melee attacks where they slap, but their main thing, he was rearing up to do it right there, is their Fire Breath. The Fire Breath has a decent radius, and it hits harder than you'd expect. Okay, be careful going down here. I like to roll here, and then pop up my shield. As you can see over there, there's another blow dart sniper shooting at me. So what I do, I try to get this crack spider to come off the edge. Good. And then we're going to roll off here, and we're going to go confront that asshole. Got him. All right. Around here you have the Wanderer set and the Falchion Sword, which isn't bad. And we have a couple enemies coming for us. I don't know the actual name of these enemies, I just call them Mosquitoes. But they are bastards, and they will cause both bleed and poison if they manage to get some of their attacks off on you. Not to mention their big rear up sting actually does a lot more damage than you'd expect from something so small. So we got that taken care of, so now we'll take this ladder to go down. There's a lot of crag spiders down here. Now, since we lured that one off the edge, he'll be trapped right there. So be careful taking him out. You don't want to mess up. There we go. Continue on. Do not let yourself get backed up to where that ladder is. If you do, you'll be trapped, and more mosquitoes will just keep coming and coming at you. And you really don't want to be trapped by a lot of mosquitoes. Something I'd also like to mention about these. I don't know exactly what the issue is, but sorcery is a bad idea when it comes to the mosquitoes. For some reason, sorceries like to curve midair right before they hit them and just fly off into nowhere. So don't waste your sorceries on them. A bow, on the other hand, is an absolutely excellent idea. Pretty much any... Oh, he almost got us with the fire attack. The bow... Uh, almost any hit you do with any weapon is going to just insta-kill them. So the bow is an excellent choice for range, and as long as you're good at aiming and timing your shots, you'll take them out no problem. We are down into the second area of Light Town, the Poison Swamp. As you can see, it's rather large, but there's a couple things to look out for to know where you're going. There's a lot of items scattered throughout the swamp as well, which we are going to work on grabbing them the next time we're here. Right now, not so much. First, however, I'm going to unequip the wolf ring and equip the rusted iron ring so I can run through this place at my normal speed. Oh. Now be careful about mosquitoes just appearing out of the swamp. They do it a lot. I don't see any more coming. Alright. Now over there is the Great Hollow, which is another area that's completely optional, and we will go there later in the game, once we're a bit more leveled, and we actually have to return here for a couple things later on. Well, not have to, but for NPC quest lines, we're going to. <laughs> and way off in the distance over there, you can probably see what looks like sand with a bunch of spikes coming out of it. That is where the area boss is, Chaos Witch Quelog. Okay, so we're gonna run, we'll probably go grab that item real quick, run over here, as you can see, we're not restricted. We are poisoned. Oh, that fire hit us. Okay. I'm actually not going to bother curing the poison right now, as it doesn't do too much to me, and I can just keep going. I don't want to waste all my poison when I might need it later. Now, over here is the bonfire for the area, but first, we're going to grab a couple items. I'm not going to grab everything yet. We'll do that the next time we come down, but I will grab a couple of things. Right over here is an item. Go ahead and grab the large soul of a proud knight. Oh, missed one. Watch out for their multi-attack. If they land all of it, it's going to hurt. And once you progress far, far enough this way, if you are currently human, 
An NPC invader called Maneater Mildred would in will invade. Where is she? There she is. She comes from right there. Your best bet is usually to lure her back into this tunnel. I am going to pop a purple boss now, since we're out of the poison. And I will go ahead and Estus in case she gets a lucky shot. She's actually not very hard to fight. Most of her attacks are very slow and easy to predict. As you can see, she uses the Butcher Knife. And she also is wearing no armor besides that sack helmet, so most attacks you have will stagger her. And she's done. Now it's very important for you to fight Mildred, as if you do, you'll then be able to summon her to fight Chaos Witch Quaylog. Go ahead and grab that, and she usually drops, I think, the Butcher Knife. Yes. Okay. Last thing we're gonna do before the bonfire is go to the back of this tunnel, and there is a chest. Oh, that's where that guy fell. And we have a Dragon Scale. Dragon scales are important for upgrading any dragon weapon, including Priscilla's dagger, as well as donating to the Everlasting Dragon's Covenant. All right, we're gonna go ahead and end this video here, but I'm gonna immediately start picking up and recording another video since we have some summon signs and we're gonna go kick Quaylog's ass. <sighs> Until next time, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the show and that you have a great day.